Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Kelly Quinn with Paint for the Wild, and today we're going to be filling in our great white drawing. So we had a drawing lesson just one video back that showed you how to draw your very own great white, and now I'm going to show you how to shade it in. So I'm going to start with just using a basic number two pencil or an HP pencil, what it's also called, and then a few other materials that I'll show you right now. Keep in mind that the only thing you need to draw and shade in this entire great white is just a normal pencil and eraser, obviously. And do not feel like you can't do this if you don't have all these materials I'm about to show you because you can totally do this with a number two pencil. I spent my entire childhood doing only number two pencil drawings and it's the best. It's a great way to learn. Don't overthink it. The materials we'll be using today is a number two pencil like we used to draw our great white. We'll be using a 2B pencil uh, I use credit color, but you can use any kind of pencil set. Just get a 2B, a 6B pencil, like this guy right here, which is also darker than our 2B and our HB, and then our darkest pencil, which is a 9B, which is a little teeny tiny baby one right here, but it's also an normal size pencil usually. And this guy right here is our darkest pencil, and we'll get your darkest darks out of this drawing. Now, a couple other tools you'll want to have if you want to explore some new uh, some new drawing avenues and techniques is obviously a brush. So get a soft watercolor brush. Any kind of brush works, doesn't need to be anything fancy, just something that you can use to lightly blend and uh, end in some different uh, shades of your drawing. And then our tortillion, this guy right here, and it is basically rolled up cardboard, that comes to a fine point, you can use to shade in little teeny tiny areas like that. So the only other thing you'll need besides that obviously is an eraser, but I definitely prefer an eraser that's either on the end of your pencil or a separate eraser that has a, it comes to a nice little, it's a small eraser because it actually allows for you to get these really cool, see these intense highlights we have throughout this drawing. It allows for you to get that at the very end using just a nice little, whoosh, little strike. And you'll get very vivid whites and a really good contrast that makes her a nice realistic looking piece. All right, those are all the materials you need. If you're ready to go, let's hop right in. Hopping right into our great white sharp, we're gonna start with our number two pencil or an HB pencil. They're the same thing, they're just using different names. So we're gonna start from our left if you're right-handed, and if you are left-handed, start from the other side just so you can avoid smudging as much of your graphite as possible. If you would like to use something to help prevent that, I recommend using some paper towels or a little cloth that you can just lay on your hand and that will really help keep you um, from just spreading any of your graphite in places you don't want. So a rule of thumb when it comes to graphite is start light and get darker over time. If you start with a really, really heavy pencil like a 6B or a 9B first, you'll find that it is a little bit more difficult to blend your graphite into the rest of your drawing. And what I mean by that is, you can kind of see how it's a bit grainy in this area right now, it's our first layer. Um, this will actually soften up a lot and create a very intense, um, and what's the word I'm looking for? A solid hue or a solid, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So by doing this, we're actually gonna create a lot of good gradient effects. That was what I was looking for. And so it's gonna create a soft gradient from a darker aspect to a lighter aspect if we start light and get darker and then also move back and forth using our light pencil ever so often in between a layer of dark to create a bit more softness. And I will guide you on how to do that throughout this entire piece. But first things first, we gotta get in our base layer. And so whenever you're putting in shading, it's always good to have in mind a light source. It's always really important knowing where your light's coming from so you create shadows and shading that actually makes sense to the human eye. So right now, I would say our sharp is just having a straight up top, starting from up top. So let's say our light source is coming from above, shining straight down on our sharp. So you can put a circle there as a light source, quote, quote, if you would like, but if you got it, don't worry about it. You don't necessarily need to put it in there. It's only if you feel like that will really help you. So we're going to go ahead and keep adding in. 
So if you notice, I am very lightly handling this pencil and I'm like just very softly holding it between these three pencils and I'm using my thumb as a leverage to tighten up on it if I want to do something harder or I'm very loose in my thumb in order to keep the pencil kind of looser in the hand making more soft strokes. I'm also following the curve of the animal's body and I found over time, this is personally for me, that graphite uh, really aids in the form of something whenever you're following uh, the curve or the mass of the body. So obviously, great white shark's pretty rotund around the body right here. It's like a torpedo for aerodynamics. And so you can just keep that in mind whenever we're shading that you're gonna kind of want to have almost like a curved shading stroke that you do that's consistent across. So if you did a lot of like little X here and X here, that's a technique. But if you're going for a more realistic shape and more form, I would recommend kind of creating a gesture of shape using these initial strokes and later on as we continue to go, um, creating that emphasis even more. And I'll show you how to do that, of course. And you're gonna wanna darken up above the pattern. So our darkest points will actually be right above the pattern. And that'll come in over time, obviously. And then you're gonna wanna leave the patches that are obviously in the dark areas are actually white patches. So just leave those white patches blank. And right now we're just doing a diagonal soft stroke consistently across the entire body. Uh, there, but as we keep going, and we keep adding in more layers, you'll notice that I'll change my technique a little bit. And that technique will become more circular strokes rather than just a straighter curve, slightly curved stroke that's repeating. So actually I'm starting to do it right now. It's, see how I'm like slowly doing these like little circle, 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 circle. I find that that tends to give more um, soft gradients than if I was doing a, a explicit hash, um, sorry, cross hatch. Cross hatch is, pretty much what we're doing using this technique, except it's just slightly modified. Normal cross hatching is like X, 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 um, lots of X's. And as you create all these little X's, it'll start to create a darker form over time, which this does the exact same thing, except it doesn't have the harsh edge that the X's do. If you'd like to try that on your, like on a scratch piece of paper, I recommend playing with that technique just to see what it is so you know how, um, what you have and your arsenal that you can use. Alrighty. And we're gonna actually darken up that lateral line a little bit more where that shadow is. Mm -hmm. When you're starting to see how we're starting to shade in a bit heavier back there on the tail, it's because this uh, lateral line actually becomes a very defined line later on on the shark. Um, so that's actually kind of like, what they actually call it like the keel, um, where it goes out, like their, their tail actually gets wider and it comes back in at the caudal vent and that just helps with stabilization. Amazing animals, great whites. I mean, sharks in general are just amazing. They've been here for millions of years, longer than the dinosaurs. And it's amazing that they're still here. So I'm happy that you love them so much that you want to draw them with me. Because they definitely need all the love they can get. See, we're already starting to get in some pretty heavy darks now and that's a good thing you know like and just so you know you don't like i said earlier don't need to have all of these uh different variations of pencils in order to do this graphite shading i actually when i was younger some of my favorite graphite drawings were all done completely and uh with an hp pencil because it was all i had and but you're still able to get quite a good range of depth and darkness and lights using an HB pencil. 
um, or just, you know, a normal number two pencil. So if you just have a number two pencil, you have all the things you need to really start learning. Go ahead and fill that in. Obviously just below the fins will be a lot darker because the sun is cast, um, casting light on the upper portions and it's creating a little bit of a shadow below. So we're defining where the tail, I mean, sorry, yeah, where the tail hits the caudal fin right here. And they also have this nice little defined line coming from the tail that goes up into the caudal fin. And again, this first part is really just about getting that initial layer of shading in. So it doesn't need to be perfectly soft or anything like that. You just want to keep it light, not getting too harsh on how hard you put your lines in because later if you get too harsh of a line at the edge where this, you know, where the graphite meets the white, you will really not be able to get it to go away too easily. So that's why I say start with a light hand, work up to a heavier hand. You like to leave quite a bit of highlight on this upper portion of the body because it creates a lot of definition later on. Um, but obviously if we do get a little too much dark, we have erasers and I love using erasers to actually add in the highlights at the very, very, very end. So now we're going to shade in our initial shading in the white portions of the body and then under the jaw, a little bit under the nose, following under the chinny chin, going up to the pectoral fin, just like that. Just do a very thin, light layer. And actually it gets uh, shaded all the way in at the end of the tail because this part upper portion of the tail is wider than the lower portion. So cast the lower portion in shadow. All right, I'm done. Sorry guys, didn't mean to go into Mario mode. <laughs> All right, sweet. All right, we're gonna define our lines just a little bit more. Before we move on, because he's gonna start really filling out with just this next graphite pencil. almost forgot our little spots. Can't forget those. They're so cute. Like literally, I, I think great whites are just so adorable. Like they got that little funny little nose and face and they just got this big old body. It's, it's like, they're just so cool. It's amazing to think that in a 40 foot long version of a great white shark, the Megalodon, once roamed our oceans, not that long ago, in all honesty. Hey, it takes a lot to survive millions and millions of years, so I've got a lot of appreciation for this animal. It's resilience, I think is what, uh, I think sharks in general represent resilience. And they're just masters of their environment. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I just realized that I had too many, um, too many gills. <laughs> He's only supposed to have five gills. Apologies, guys. Um, so actually, we still have a couple of sharks that have six gills, which is the evolutionary, um, which evolutionarily speaking, five gills is the latest evolution, whereas six gills is a typical for older species of more ancient species of sharks, like example, the six gill shark that still exists, um, which were literally relics from a completely different time on the planet. And 
Alrighty. Let me go ahead and fill in more of this. We'll come back and add a more refined highlight later on. All right, so let's add in a bit more darkness on the lower caudal fin here. Remember to keep the white pattern area relatively clear. I mean, we're gonna put a little bit of shading in there just because obviously it's in shadow. But just remember that don't fill it in all the way. We want to have that defined away from the darker area. Alrighty, let's move on to the next pencil. Next pencil is going to be our 2B pencil, which is going to add another layer of darkness onto our graphite. So again, you're going to be holding this and utilizing the pencil in the exact same way that we have been using our number two HB pencil. And if you already see, you know, when I was talking about how you'll have a softer gradient to a more um, rich and solid shade, you already get that when you just go over it with this pencil. You can get that uh, feeling and that look relatively quick quickly. Here we go. And make sure to hit those little dark spots that we put in down below. And obviously wherever the fins are, it's going to be a lot darker of an area because either it's cast in shadow um, and it's also the lowest portion of the bilateral camouflage, which is this above below camouflage. So why the great white shark even has this pattern is because from below other sharks can't tell um, that it's above them or like, you know, that it can't be as easy, easily spotted. Oh, and especially when it's younger um, as a prey item from a, or like another shark, another great white shark even. But the darker area on the top is actually great for camouflage from above for their main food sources, which typically tend to be seals um, and even walruses for the really big ones, which is crazy to think. So we're just defining some of these key areas a bit more. Definitely make sure you get into the fin on the pectoral and darken up that edge right here because that's going to be the curve of the uh, pectoral fin. So it's cast in shadow but the upper portion is going to be cast in highlight. And I'll show you that later on with an eraser. So with this like kind of little scritchy scratchy kind of curve thing we're doing right here, this is just to create the effect of the fin having more form um, in different levels of, um, it's a kind of flex. So think of like on a, on a fish, like a normal fish fin uh, has those little uh, little striations and it has more flex and give. Sharks have this exact same kind of like structure. It's just not as defined. So that's why we use this uh, physically drawing those little lines to help us draw it in a way that we create more depth and movement on the fin instead of it just looking like a flat fin. And obviously we're gonna really darken up below it. And again, you see I'm following the curve and the angle of the body.
And if you lose your perfect white line, don't worry, it's okay. We can pull it back later on with an eraser. But really don't draw over it too heavily with any of these darker pencils because it will become difficult to get back to pure white, which is important for a graphite drawing is to have those portions of pure white, just the same as it is for a watercolor. Alrighty. And go ahead and put a little bit of heavier hand as you get further back, especially on the underside of that lateral line. And then softly get lighter as you're coming from the tail into the belly. Just locked it up. Do, 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 do. Okay. Don't forget the fin down here. It's going to be cast in a pretty dark shadow, so it's going to be a relatively dark portion of our great white today. bottom portion a little bit. I think the pectoral fin needs just a little bit more darkness on it at the very, very bottom. And again, right here. Okay. All right, so now we're done with our 2B. We're gonna move on to our 6B. All right, now our 6B pencil, this guy right here, it's going to be obviously even darker and you will see that immediately as soon as we set it here on our paper. You're gonna concentrate this again at the lowest portions of your dark areas. We're also going to place it in the eye, specifically in the pupil. Make sure you hit those little dots on the belly and on the chin. So you see whenever you really concentrate this dark graphite um, right on that edge of where your bilateral camouflage shifts, it really just creates a lot of nice emphasis. And um, while that might not be necessarily 100% realistic, it's a stylistic choice, which is the thing with being an artist is you get to make stylistic choices that emphasize certain aspects of an animal or subject that you really love or you want to highlight. So just think about that whenever you're using your materials that you're not constrained by reality. Um, you're only constrained by what you think is true. So whenever you're creating, try to have a little bit of freeness uh, whenever you're approaching something. And you might surprise yourself with a, either a new idea or just something that really pops to you and matters to you, which is important whenever you're starting out especially. Get a little bit right there. Again, obviously we're gonna darken up this area, but instead of doing the whole thing, we're actually gonna focus back in on creating those little striations in the cuddle fin. Gonna go into our secondary fin. Add a bit more darkness right there. Awesome. All right, again, over here on the dorsal fin. Just a little bit more, very, very softly when you're going into the lighter area like that. Back over. Very 
awesome. All right, let's define that lateral line a little bit more. And maybe even a little bit above the eye. And do some more of that in this area. All right, so this is just with our 6B. Now we're gonna hop in, use our 9B. This is a little down, guy. The 9B, so this is a same on par with an ebony pencil. This is your darkest darks. Um, whenever you're doing more large scale pieces, this especially comes in handy. So you see that whenever, as soon as we put this on there, it pretty much just becomes purely black. Um, if there is really no more tooth, or like when I say tooth, it's the paper showing through at the um through your medium your graphite whatever it is you're using just locks so again we're just keeping it and those areas of darkness I'm not going to do too much on the top. Do a little bit down here. All right. Darken up the very, very bottom of that guy. And now we're gonna go through with a quick shading um, to soften up all everything, to pull everything together. So the three things that we're going to use to finalize our piece are these three tools right here. We have a tortillon right here, which is basically just rolled up cardboard, it comes to a point, it's great for doing little teeny tiny areas. We have a watercolor brush, which is great for doing larger portions, larger areas of blending, just like this. And then we have an eraser. You can just use your eraser on your pencil, or if you have a separate eraser, you can use that as well. And that's great for doing highlights. So pulling back your highlights after you've already blended in all your darks and gotten everything soft, going back over with this one more time and pulling out your brightest brights, it makes it pop. It's amazing. So we're going to go ahead and start with our watercolor brush. And there's no water on our watercolor brush, but keep in mind that if you wanted to really experiment, you can put water on your watercolor brush and uh, actually create almost a, uh, a graphite watercolor. I've done quite a few of those and it's a lot of fun. It's kind of a different technical challenge. And um, so if you're you know, bored at home and you wanna try something a little different, do that and I promise you will have a good time and it's a good exploratory moment. I might actually do a class on that in a little while here on Paint for the Wild, so just keep an eye out. If you're really interested in that, please say so in the comments below and that will let us know that you know you guys really want to see something like that. Alrighty. So you already see just like soft, 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 soft. Softly blending together everything. It's just creating a little bit more of a gentle smooth gradient between all of these different intensities of graphite. Especially love it uh, in your white areas. It's definitely one of the better things to use for creating soft gradient in pure white areas. Now you can turn You can go in and do these tiny little blending um, areas. And you're holding your cotillion just the same way you'd be holding your brush. So I'm doing that exact same kind of little crosshatch technique I was describing earlier. I'm actually going to zoom in for you guys. All right, so here's the tortillon, and you already see how it pushes and pulls your graphite around without adding new graphite to your piece, which is really nice to have whenever you're working in very fine little tiny details. 
trying to define, like here I'm defining the jaw a little bit, under the nose, you know, adding some shading in the nostril, around the eye, but uh, areas that would have been too small for refining uh, with the brush, and you would maybe be a little bit uh, afraid you would get too much graphite on. So that's why it's awesome for all of these uh, small little tiny detail areas that you wanna keep pretty uniform and not let get out of hand. So you see, it's a really fun, really useful little tool. You don't think, don't worry, you don't need to have this to create this soft um, development. You just have to have a lot of patience and take a little bit more time with your pencil set. So we're gonna go ahead and use that tortillon in a couple of little places, just like on the thin, kind of using it to refine a couple of these little lines and areas, especially out here on the tail, the tail needs a little bit more refining, just a little too grainy for my liking. And just soften it up. All right. Now, once we're all done using some of our blending techniques, you can even go in with that eraser now. And we're going to go ahead and also erase our extra lines, such as our light source up there, any kind of smudges you have. Boop, 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 like that. Yes. Especially with a nice heavy hand with that eraser. Just one nice slow line to create highlight on the very top of your shark. Following that lateral line, going to the very top, a little bit on the beginning of the dorsal fin, absolutely on the very, very far edge, left edge. A little bit on the top of the pectoral fin, kind of even add in some of those little lines that we were talking about earlier that create the effect of a form. A little bit on very, very top of the gills. Make sure your cheeky cheek is nice and defined and around in this area as well. Going to go along the back right here. Get on the very tippy top of that fin as well as our caudal fin. A little bit right there. And then one more striation right here. In between these lines, these are kind of Mess up my smudge there, but that's okay. And then a just slight little bit of erasing to be done right above the pectoral fin where like the shoulder area kind of would be. Okay, so we're gonna go back in and fill that in a little bit with our HB pencil. That's our lightest one. I removed a little too much. Also know that whenever you erase, you do damage your paper. So over time, if you're erasing and then you're redrawing, erasing and then redrawing, you're ultimately going to damage your paper and you're also, and it's gonna show through in whatever graphite um, or shade you put next on your, um, on your drawing because the paper is, is no longer smooth and so it's, um, it will show any of those marks. All right, just a couple little marks to clean up. And we are all done. 
All right, and there is how you draw and fill in your own gray white sharp. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to draw your own great white shark and also shading it in. If you have any questions about the techniques, the materials, or any of the steps in our video, please comment below and we will get back to you as soon as we can. And if you would like to see more classes like this, please hit that subscribe button and join us on more creative journeys in the next couple weeks. We would love to see your work too. So please add us in hashtag with of the wild and at Paint for the Wild on Facebook and Instagram, and we would love to see your work and to share it. I hope you enjoyed today, and I can't wait to draw or paint with you again soon. Stay safe, stay positive, and keep creating. See you later, guys.